What's going on you guys? Welcome back to another Swift tutorial. Today we're going to be taking a look at how you can save data on your iOS app using the Realm database. So if you're not familiar, Apple provides core data and some mechanisms to save uh, data on your app for your users. But there's a third party solution called Realm, which is super popular and I'm a little biased because I really like it and we're going to be demoing how we can use it. So with that being said, make sure you smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm and let's jump right into it. So we're going to start as always by creating a new Xcode project and we're going to stick with a single view application. Let's call this Realm Demo and make sure your project is in Swift. Let's save this to our desktop. And the first thing we want to do is actually bring in Realm. So Realm is a third party framework, like I mentioned, and you can bring it in in a variety of ways. We're going to bring it in using CocoaPods. So if you're not familiar how to install a CocoaPod, I encourage you to take a look at that video, but we're going to basically open up terminal cd into that project directory we're going to do a pod init and an open pod file like so hit enter and we'll get this window open let's go ahead and delete this and let's bring in realm swift like so we can go and close this hit pod install and give this a second uh, and we have it installed. Now we need to actually close this instance of Xcode and open uh, our project name dot .xe workspace. So again, workspace is uh, install, actually install and bring in our CocoaPod, which in this case is Realm. So cool. So now we have Realm in this project. Let's go ahead and close terminal and let's expand this a little bit like so. Let's also hit command R or this play button up here to build and run into our simulator. And we're going to import realm and start saving stuff. So give this just a second while it's doing that. Let's actually pop into our view controller like so. And up here, let's import realm Swift. Now notice it's a uh, suffixed by Swift. If you just wanted, if you just imported Realm, that's actually the Objective C variant. So be careful about the version uh, that you bring into your project. Uh, it's super well documented on the website, so I encourage you to take a look. If you get an error, it'll go away like you just saw, and it should build successfully and open up an empty application. So cool. How do, how do we actually save stuff now? So Realm it lets you basically take instances of models. So a model object, so a class that represents some data and save that to the realm database. So we're going to come down here and we're going to create an instance of a person and it's going to be a class and we're going to say person and every element that you want to save into the realm database needs to inherit from object, which is a pretty easy class name to remember. And what you want to do in here is add all the properties with default values. Now, a couple of things that are important. When we add a property, for example, first name, we need to make sure that it has a default value. We can also supply the type. But most importantly, we need to mark it Objective-C and dynamic. So under the hood, Realm uses Objective-C and dynamic variables uh, to save instances of your data. So let's add a couple more properties. Let's do age, which will be int. And let's actually make this optional. It'll be nil by default. Let's get rid of this one. Let's do last name. And we're going to start saving person objects uh, into our database. And then we're also going to obviously display it back out to the user. So to get an instance of the database, we can simply say realm, it's a constant, and we want to say try realm. The reason we need the try and the exclamation mark is basically when we initialize realm, it, it's trying to create, rather fetch the instance of the database. So we need the try exclamation mark. Uh, it always succeeds unless there's something weird. So you could do it in a do catch statement uh, like so. 
where if an error is thrown, you can catch it. But this is out of scope for this video and quite frankly unnecessary for 99% of apps that use Realm. So the way we save something uh, in the database is by creating an instance of that class and simply calling Realm add object. So we're going to create a person. I'm going to say, let's say Joe is a person. Joe's first name is Joe. Last name is Smith. And we're going to say add object. And the object is going to be Joe. And if I remember correctly, we no longer need, actually, we might need this. So before you actually add the object, you want to call realm begin write and complete write or end write, end write. Is that it? It might be commit. I don't recall. There we go. Commit write. So before you add any objects to the realm database, you need to tell realm, I'm about to write something to the database. And once you're done, you just want to commit, which will actually do your saving. Uh, so all the operations that you've done within these two uh, calls. So this is how you actually save something. So let's just hit Command R. Let's fix these errors first. Let's see, call can throw. Let's do a try like that to get rid of that. And this is complaining because it's age. Let's see, property cannot be marked objective C. Let's do the zero instead, like so. And let's say command R. And once our app launches and this view did load function is called, we basically saved an instance of a person to the database. And this variable is Joe as we've called it. So you can't really see anything happen here, but we've in fact saved Joe to the database. So let's actually, uh, get rid of this code. Let's actually move it to a function called save. And here, let's write another function actually, and let's call it um, render. Let's call render here. And what render is going to do is it's going to fetch all of the saved person objects in the database, and we're going to show it uh, on the screen. We're going to show the name rather of uh, one of those people. In this case, we've only saved one person. So the way that we would fetch is we would say let people equals try realm dot objects, and then we want to supply the type of object that we want to get back. So we're going to say person dot self. So what this is basically saying is return all of the person objects that you have saved in the database. And what we can actually do is we can say for person in people, let first name is person dot first name, last name is person dot last name, and their full name is their first name and their last name. Let's actually create a label in here. And we're going to say it has a frame. Let's use the entire screen actually. And let's set the labels text to the full name. I'm going to say label dot text alignment is center. Um, let's see, we're going to say label the number of lines is zero to make it line wrap. And we're going to say view dot add sub view label. Let's also increase the font of this. Let's use Helvetica and let's do 42. So what we're going to basically do now is when this render function is called, let's see why is this complaining? Realm, let's see, objects, no calls of throwing. The reason this is complaining is actually because we don't need this. But if we did something like this, then we would need it. So because we already have an instance of Realm, we can get rid of this try call. And if we command R, what we're going to do is 
for every person object that we have, we're going to create a label and show it on the screen like so. And if you look at that, we have Joe Smith shown here because we only saved one instance of Joe Smith. So that's how you save and fetch an object in Realm. So let's talk about how to delete it. So every time our app actually launches, what we want to do is we're going to remove... We're going to delete objects. And the way we're going to delete objects is we're going to delete them in a batch. So here we're going to say realm uh, delete. And what we're going to do is we're going to pass in this whole thing. So we're going to delete all the person objects that are stored. And after we do that, we're going to then call the save function so we can save in a person. And then after that, we subsequently call render. But in our save function, let's change up this name. So now we should see Jenny Johnson printed on the screen. So first we're going to delete, then we're going to save, and then we are going to render. But it looks like we've crashed. And the reason we've crashed is actually we forgot to call realm begin write and commit. So we're going to say realm begin write and commit write. And I believe we need a try in front of this. And if we hit command R to build and run again, we'll see now we have Jenny Johnson. So you just saw an important lesson there. Every time you do any operation within the database, whether it's an update, an add, a delete, you want to make sure you call this begin and commit uh, before and after your actual operation. So now let's actually talk about the last piece, which is how would you get multiple pieces of data back? Actually, what we've already done here is exactly that. So the reason I've called this people and not person is when you say realm objects, plural, for the type of object, you get in you get a uh, array of that object back. And we've done a for loop over it because we were just saving one object at a time. But for the sake of simplicity, what I'll actually do is instead of th throwing it on the screen, we're going to print it out and we'll see the person's name logged. So let's uh, call save. And in here, what we're going to do is we're going to create a bunch of these. Uh, let's see, what's an easier way? I guess we can just copy and paste it for now. Let's say Dan, let's actually make this Jenny. We can keep Joe and just update his name. Dan, Mark, don't forget to update this, this, this. Like so, and I believe we've got them all, Dan, Joe, Jenny, and Mark. And of course, don't forget to actually add them to your database. So we're gonna add Joe, uh, Jenny, Dan, and Mark. And before we actually call the save, we wanna delete all the current elements that are saved for person. So we're gonna say begin write. And we're gonna delete set of results which is this guy. So let's copy and paste that here. We'll do realm commit. Make sure you put a try in front of this. And we're gonna save and then render, which doesn't actually render, we'll just print out their full name. So let's hit command R, open up our console, take a look down here. If you look at that, we've actually got our four names printed out because we are in fact, saving four different person objects and in here we're fetching those four people and we're printing their full name so yeah there you have it that's how you can save data in your ios app using realm i personally really like using realm because you don't have to deal with uh, the overhead of core data which is apple's solution for saving database objects it's super clean to just create model classes like this you can just subclass from object put your properties on it and you can save it and fetch it pretty simply with minimal amount, amounts of code. Uh, so yeah, those are kind of my reasons that I'm a little biased towards Realm. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you haven't done so already, make sure you hit that like button below. If you're new, welcome to the channel. Subscribe for daily Swift tutorials, and I'll catch you in the next one.